The aldo addition reaction is very powerful. You make a molecule that has two useful functional groups. You make a bigger molecule from a smaller one. You're doubling the number of carbons by having the aldehyde that you start with add to itself. Here's the new carbon-carbon bond. To be sure we keep a clear fix on exactly what's happening, I like to put a box around the two carbons of the starting material, the carbonyl group and the alpha carbon. This doesn't vary. The alkyl attached to it does vary. And then I put a box around the four carbons that derive from these two carbons of the aldehyde starting material. This part of the product stays the same. We have a 1,3-hydroxy ketone, and on the two and four carbons we have the alkyl group that we started with. As powerful as this is, the fact that these alkyl groups must be the same thing is really limiting. There are many structures when we wish they would be different. This brings to mind the possibility of using two different aldehydes, something called a crossed aldo reaction. Here's the concept. Treating these two aldehydes with aldo conditions, we could think of one of these being the emulate, for instance, the one that has the brown alkyl group, to add the one that has the blue alkyl group. So the product is differentially substituted. We have two different alkyl groups on the carbons 2 and 4. This would be good. But there's a problem with this that you may have already seen. The aldehyde with the blue alkyl group could be an enolate, adding to the carbonyl of the aldehyde with the brown alkyl group. So this reaction could make two different aldols. But wait, you also could have self-addition. So an enolate having a blue alkyl group could add to another molecule of aldehyde having a blue alkyl group. And the other one could self-add. So we really have to consider four possible products. So crossed aldos typically don't work. But if we could adjust the structures of these two so that one could enolize and the other couldn't, and the one that can't enolize readily undergoes nucleophilic addition, you can have two reacting partners, one that prefers to be an enolate and the other one that prefers to undergo addition. And under those conditions, the crossed aldol works. Let me give you a couple examples. Formaldehyde can't enolize. It doesn't have any alpha hydrogens. And because it only has hydrogens attached to the carbonyl, it undergoes nucleophilic addition very readily. So when we treat it with a normal aldehyde plus sodium hydroxide, we can get good yields of a crossed aldo. We can picture the enolate here with its negative charge, and we can picture addition here. If we take these two carbons with dots, here they are, and there's an alkyl group attached to the alpha carbon. So we'll draw it in. And notice that in this crossed aldol product, we only have three carbons in the box. Two carbons that came from the aldehyde that enolized, and the other carbon that came from formaldehyde. We still have a 1,3-hydroxyaldehyde. And we have the differential substitution we talked about. The alkyl group from the aldehyde is attached to only one carbon. Here's a second common possibility. Since aldehyde has no alpha hydrogens, and it undergoes nucleophilic addition readily, in fact, that phenyl group attached directly to the carbonyl promotes nucleophilic addition. So it's an ideal partner for a crossed aldo reaction. This time, let's look at using butyraldehyde. We can tag two of the aldehyde carbons with blue dots, the carbonyl and the alpha carbon. Here they are. We can put our blue box around the 1,3-hydroxycarbonyl. Again, there are three carbons in this box, not four. And if we label the other two carbons in this aldehyde, here they are attached to the alpha carbon. So there are examples of crossed aldols that work well. There are special ones, but they're also useful. You might be wondering about the use of ketones in these aldol reactions. Well, ketones typically are problematic. They give worse yields. They have alpha hydrogens on both sides of the carbonyl. So you can have two different enolates. Yields are poor and reaction mixtures result. However, there are a few cases that work well. For example, what if you used acetone? Then both sides are the same. So let's pick an aldehyde that has no alpha hydrogens. Nucleophiles can add, but it can't be an enolate. And look at the aldo reaction with acetone. Now I haven't specified cold on here because it doesn't matter. The initial hydroxyketone 
eliminates water very readily. So the alpha, beta, and saturated ketone is formed readily. Remember, we're talking about making an etolate from the acetone, which will add as a nucleophile to this carbonyl. The OH was here in the initial aldol product, which was lost immediately during dehydration. But do you think this is the product, or have you been wondering about that other methyl group of the acetone? This methyl group can do the same thing. And so what we really isolate is not this intermediate, which continues to react, but rather the condensation product that has reacted at both methyl groups of the acetone. This is the product known as dibenzalacetone. Not benzyl, but benzel. And the preparation of dibenzalacetone from benzaldehyde and acetone itself is a common laboratory in introductory organic chemistry. Okay, but this is a pretty limited use of a ketone in an aldol reaction. There is something else we can do that broadens our ability to use ketones in aldol reactions. It's called the directed aldol. Here's a common example. 2-methylcyclohexanone has two different alpha carbons. When you treat that ketone with LDA at very low temperature, this is lithium diisopropyl amide at minus 78 degrees, you selectively deprotonate at the less substituted position. Now we have a nucleophile like we have in a regular aldol, but we've formed it quantitatively. We have it in solution, and the aldehyde that we want it to react with is not there yet. Now we can treat it with an aldehyde, let's say propion aldehyde. That can undergo nucleophilic addition. So the enolate that we've just made from the 2-methylcyclohexanone can add to the aldehyde. When we finish by adding a little bit of mild acid, we'll keep this cold, we can get the aldol product. And if we want to track the carbons of the aldehyde, here they are. It's called the directed aldol because we direct the position of substitution to the alpha carbon of our choice, the one that's less substituted. Reactions like these examples of crossed aldol reactions broaden that aldol addition and aldol condensation reaction to be far more useful by varying the substitution that we can get on the 1,3-hydroxycarbonyl compound in the product.